we take off with big news, and I think this may be the first time we've ever led the show with this company, but big news out of Bed Bath & Beyond. Is it the first time? I don't know. I, think I, think, it, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think, think the activist the investor. Led. Yes. Okay. Led. All right. Well, Chris, um, we teased it enough. We learned of the news yesterday morning from CNBC, but Mark Tritton is officially out as CEO of Bed Bath & Beyond. The news came on word of a 24% drop in same-store sales and a 21% drop in e-commerce sales over the prior quarter. Ouch! Yeah, right? Damn. Uh, Sue, Sue Gove? Govey? I don't know I don't how you know pronounce how you say her name. name actually, yeah. um, an independent Good direct, try, though. Yeah, give, give it a multiple, couple of options. Multiple options? Yeah, yeah I like that approach. Uh, <laughs> she is an independent director on the board, and she will now step in as interim CEO. Chris... Um, this is another week, I think, where you get to like do your little victory dance or whatever you do I, in these scenarios. I but think so. What What are your thoughts on this one? First of all, I never like to take a victory lap when someone is fired, but um, but you know, <laughs> good. I, good. But good I, I, you know, I, I don't revel in that, but I do take some pride in it. I guess I would say too. But okay. I, I don't know if there's really a difference between reveling and pr- taking pride, but but anyway. And because the joke is so easy, I'm going to make it today. And I, I here's my thoughts on this. First of all, my 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 thoughts on this are that I guess his job was not quote unquote sequentially stable as he led us to believe Bed Bath and Beyond's market share was. Which, for loyal Omni Talk fans, they'll recognize uh, that joke pretty easily. But you know, to me, at the end of the day, and like you said, Ann, I've been incredibly vocal on this, perhaps more than any. I would actually say perhaps more than anyone. Yeah, from you the got a very, real, very beginning like, on this. flag in the sand on this one. Yeah, I did, because I never liked the hire. And I didn't like the hire for two reasons. One, I hated the private label strategy. Okay. It's the exact wrong thing to do, which yep. we talked about on the show ab nauseum. Mm-hmm. But in summary, for those maybe that are new to the show, to me, it introduced a ton of risk into the assortment and put you head to head with the big guys like Target, Walmart, Wayfair. And ultimately, it doesn't answer the question, which is fundamental, which is why are people coming to Bed Bath & Beyond to begin with? Right. Because you... Even if you make great private label products, you're still going to buy those online. Why am I going to the store? How right. are you fundamentally solving that issue? And then two, which I think is also really important in the context of this story, he was given way, way too much credit for what he did at Target. Hmm. Um, as you always joke, and Target has always had private label brands. Right, right, right. And all he did was he was he was in tenure there mm-hmm. when they remarketed them. They rebranded them. Right. And so the question that I always like to ask is, would Target have gotten to that place without him? One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, you think so? With oh my god, without a doubt, without a doubt. I, there's no doubt in my mind that Target would have gotten to the same place without yeah. him. And so the question is, like, it just to me it was the exact wrong strategy, exact wrong hire from Bed Bath Beyond. Curious to see where they go next with this. I would have gone personally in the opposite direction. I would have leveraged the actual national brands that they had more and played mm-hmm. them up more. I think right. that's the way to do it to to play up the cachet that you can get on your shelves mm-hmm. relative to a Target and a Walmart. Yeah. But hey, but that's my take. Yeah, I mean, when I read this, I was not surprised at all. Um, he was getting paid a lot of money. Like I brought well, up the, the activist letter. Off. Yeah, he was getting paid so much money. Yeah. Um, that Ryan Cohen letter when he kind of yeah. called them all out for not producing work that's getting people inside of Bed Bath and Beyond. Right. Like we just keep, kept seeing, and still, even like within the last couple of weeks, they're still putting out own brands as their strategy. Which, like for me, during a pandemic, like there was no discussion of outside of maybe like curbside pickup where they were trying to make the experience better or you know bring people in for those like well-known brands that bed bath and beyond can offer a customer there was no reason especially in the home category like the home category was blowing up during the last two years because people had a right. lot of money to burn right. they were investing in their homes and their spaces and you know spending money to make their lives better at, in their houses. And there was there, they should have been winning. They should have been testing much more outside of own brands. And after three years, there's no, no, no. more reason to shop there than there was when he started, which is, which is I think, the, the issue for me and Bed Bath & Beyond as a whole. Right. And actually, you bring up another point, too, which somebody sent to me on, on, on social media, too, which I thought was interesting. He said he placed an order for like a special soap that Bed Bath & Beyond still carried. And he ordered six of them. Mm-hmm. And he got six separate deliveries. Mm. Which is important because it shows you that you can't fix what's going on with a retailer from a branding strategy. It's the product problem I've talked about all the time. Like right. You have to fix it fundamentally from the ground up. And that shows me that there's still a lot of root issues in, in their fulfillment, in their omnichannel capabilities overall. But your last point, too, that I think is great, 
is he made a ton of money on this. So maybe I do revel in this a little bit because if you can make that much money on the way up mm -hmm. when you're not effectively doing anything, you better well be able to take the criticism on the way down. Right. That's what I think. And right. that's why I actually think we do what we do because it's important to point this out along the whole journey here as well. Right. 